Every praise belongs to who? Jesus. Hallelujah. I know that we say. Every praise belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Every word of worship belongs to him. Hallelujah. Because he has won the battle on our behalf already. Why we come here at all times, we give thanks to him because it is the finished work of the cross that we come to provide. It is done. It is finished for the glory of the Father. So that is why we declare that every praise belongs to every praise belongs to Jesus. Not any the one that was from the beginning and it come Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is the King of the everlasting Father. He is coming back for his bride very shortly. And those who belong to him will be right in the middle of the air. And we want the whole world to know that. That's why we're celebrating Jesus this morning. We're celebrating our God this morning. Because we don't want to be the only ones that is going to be in heaven. We want as many that are willing to give their life to Jesus. To hear the good news and accept him as the Savior. Hallelujah. 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 I know it's a little bit hot today for all of you who are here in Canada, different places of the world, but I'm going to give you a trick for if you're hot. Uh, you see, get it, take it from a Middle Eastern person. Okay? All the time. best way to cool yourself down is drink hot tea or hot coffee. And I tell you, where you go to Middle East, Because once you bring your body temperature up, you don't feel the heat from the outside so much as inside. But if you keep on cooling down your inside, you will feel the heat from the outside much more. I'm telling you, it works. It works. The same way that it works, when the heat of the in us, then the heat of the enemy, the heat of the enemy does not bother us because there's a greater heat that is coming from out, inside us. Oh, oh hallelujah to take the temperature of God's glory on another level of our life that the heat of the world will be to put to shame because the heat of God the heat of God hallelujah 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 I know you try to get some shade the sun is shining on the the sun has moved if you can kindly move I have neck problems you know if you can kindly move if you can just come more in the sun you know, because I want to talk to all of you. I don't want to miss some of you over the back or in the corner. You know, sometimes my voice, you know, doesn't travel as far as it should travel. But, you know, God will hear us somehow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for His goodness. Praise God for His mercy. Praise God for who He is in our midst. Praise Him at all times. Amen. Amen. The church of God is alive. The church of God is ready. And the church of God is moving. And I'm not talking about denomination. Please understand. I'm talking about the Iglesia. I'm talking about the ones that are called out. We are moving forward with Him. Hallelujah. Nothing stopping what is already in motion a long time ago and we thank the lord for his goodness and for his greatness in our life today i know you need to go to the beach very quickly to calm down calm down and calm down no problem you'll be at the beach in a few hours i guarantee you you'll be out of here by noon time three o'clock i was going to send the reason because omar is very smart he told me, which day? <laughs> that doesn't mean much. I'm of here very quickly. I know it's getting hot for you guys, but I'm happy that it's hot. You know, I, 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 know, I, know I, like, I like heat. 
uh, much more than the cold but uh, it's, it's good for me so bear don't pray against the heat because I only have like two three weeks per month per month per year to enjoy this seat you know yeah. but we're going to be talking today about shifting into supernatural faith I'm going to be ministering to you today on that subject and we'll let this policeman do their thing whoever the escorting whatever is happening I see a couple of things that's going on they're making big sounds for them that's wonderful that is that is wonderful they, they, they're escorting a bunch of things that are going to eventually go in the trash can <laughs> they're all going to go to the metal one day <laughs> you know <laughs> they're escorting a bunch of metal products that <laughs> you know yeah amen sorry no all right amen amen let us pray sorry our father we are so thankful to you for who you are and who we are we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the fellowship of the saints here today. We thank you, Lord God, that you are bringing people back to the heart of worship. Those who do not know you and those who have somehow have forgotten what it means to be, O Lord God, continuously being with you. Encourage us, O Lord, today with your word as we are going to encourage those who you sent us to to receive the gospel to move forward to do the things of the kingdom of God we pray that your word goes forth and brings much fruit for your glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen just before I go to the word uh, if anyone here is interested of getting baptized I know there were a couple people that wanted to get baptized a couple week uh, last week Sunday we had eight people baptized last Sunday praise God and uh, we are going to have another baptism very soon. If you want to get baptized, please see Sister Sherry, stand up, wave your hand. You know, if you have committed your life to the Lord and you made a decision that it's time to, to get baptized and, uh, and make up your mind that you will follow Jesus all the days of your life, it is time to see Sister Sherry. She will get your name down and we will make sure that we let you know what will happen in a couple weeks from now, uh, God willing. And uh, it's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Turn with me your Bible to Matthew chapter uh, 14. And we're going to start from verse 24, reading down to 29 together. And I'm going to minister on the subject of shifting into supernatural faith. Hallelujah. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 reads, But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the sea. And I will stop right here, because I want to bring you to something to your attention this morning. The story that we are about to read is right after the miracle of feeding the 5,000 with a little boy's lunch. And Jesus sent them immediately afterwards. It wasn't them to go in the boat to go on the other side. Jesus put in the world that is taking place and he is ordaining things to take place. And it was in the middle of the night, it was on the fourth watch hour, it was right voice and contrary wind goes up that Jesus showed up and I that in the last two years it is not the plans of the enemy that is in control it is the plans of God that he wants to show his miraculous power in this hour how he's going to change our faith in him and walk with him wherever he's calling us to be we might be in the fourth hour or in this hour. We might be in the contrary voices all around us. On all country, winds are going on. But the Lord at this hour say, I am in charge still. And I'm showing up right now in the time needed because I have to change your mind of not depending on your own information and knowledge, but depending on the move of my Holy Spirit. 
praise God. He's shifting his church to walk in power and anointing against the will, the wills, the, the ways of the world. And then he goes in verse 25, he says, Now the fourth watch all watch of the night, Jesus went to them and walking on the sea. And and when he when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled and say, It is a ghost. They cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer it is i do not be afraid messages that no matter what has been happening with this COVID or whatever is going on jesus is saying do not worry i am in charge i'm in control fear not. it is not the enemy that is doing anything it is i that is walking in your midst it is not the powers and the principalities and authorities of this world that are in control. I am still in control of all things that is happening in this world. And I want to release that to you today to understand that Jesus is not neither sleeping, neither is worried about anything. While we as a church have been worried and fearful of the, what is happening in this world, God didn't tell us to be fearful. He says, be of good cheers. I will overcome this world. Go forward and make disciples of all nations. Don't worry about these things. These things will happen. Wars will happen. Rumors of wars will happen. Pestilence will come. All sorts of things. Right? It says, do not worry. These are things that are supposed to happen. But it's your job as a church to trust in me and go forth and do the will of my Father, which I have accomplished on the cross through the power of the Holy And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. That word if, many years I missed it. But today, I grabbed a hold of that word if. I said, Peter, what do you mean if? What do you mean if it's you? The reason he says if it's you is because there is still some doubt in him. His personal relationship is not that tight with him. He doesn't know his words that intimately. He is not walking according to everything that the Lord has been telling him. There is still a little bit of the world in him and a little bit of the Lord in him. There is a world and the Lord in him. So he asks his question, if that is you. The question is should never be on our mind. We should be so intimate with Jesus that when he says, we say, here I am send me like Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord and says here I am send me Lord when the Lord says whom will come of God and he was intimate with God here I am Lord send he didn't say if that is you Lord send me he says no here I am Lord send me and the Lord intimate in our personal relationship with him that when the Lord says move, we move. When he says stop, we stop. When he says pray, we pray. When he says heal, we heal. When he says move on, we move on. We understand his will perfectly. And we don't wonder if it is him because we are so intimate with him. His voice is so real to us. I don't need to worry if it's Brother Jimmy calling me. When he calls me, even I don't see him on the caller ID, I know it's him. I know his voice. I know his voice. I don't call. I don't say, "Oh, Frankie, it's good to hear you," because I know Frankie's voice is different than Jimmy. I know that all of your voices is different because I have a relationship with you. Unless I do not know your voice, either, I don't know. You call. I have to say, "Who is this?" Oh, thank you for introducing yourself. I remember now you because we have not got intimate enough to know the voice. But God is talking to Peter and his disciples. And Peter says, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come. And the Lord says, Peter says, yes. Answered him and says, Lord, if it's you, let me come. And the Lord says, so, come. And Peter came and started walking out of the boat. Out of the boat, he walked on water. And he started moving towards Jesus. And I will stop right there. As the Holy Spirit is leading us, we will continue maybe this next week, but we will, I'm not stopping the sermon, I'm stopping the reading the scripture because there's much more to the scripture than 
just these nine were four horses. But Jesus told him to come and he started walking on water. He abided him and says, Abide, come to me. We live this life based on the information and education and experiences that we have received to bring us into a real, to a realm of reality and truth that is based on our own knowledge. Based on our different cultures and how we were brought up, we have accepted something to be true and facts of life, which is not so. We live our spiritual life and our doctrinal belief based on cultural upbringing, teaching, and information that we have received. I heard many people say, but we've been doing this all our life. All, all. This is how we do things. And I said, perhaps, maybe, this is the reason why nothing has happened yet. In your own life. Perhaps, that is why you have not noticed the power of God in your own personal life. On what man taught you, not what the Holy Spirit arose out of you. If you remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about this. We do not to find him. We worship Jesus out of the Holy Spirit to get us closer to the will of the Father. Too many times church folks worship God to find him. To get into his presence. Imagine if we worship him to be fully aligned to his glory. What kind of worship that would be. When we worship Him out of the Spirit, what the Spirit leads us to worship, we will be worshiping Jesus for hours and be lost in His presence and don't even care that we're lost in the presence of the Lord. And I'm not talking about having church service. I'm talking about in your home. In your home, just being lost in God's presence. Song after song, scriptures after scriptures, worshiping God, giving you because the Holy Spirit is working through you and using your mouth to do warfare where nobody can see you and Him only are standing together strong and mighty. All that we know has caused us to stay in safe places and limited ourselves into the safety of our knowledge. Life will serve you and hand you if you do not shift into another gear you will lose and be left behind today i want to bring into you into a place that you will make a decision will i stay in familiar safe places of the past experience or will i have the courage to get out of the boat and live the supernatural life that god has for his church many are missing the supernatural life that god has for us because they are holding tight to what are familiar to them they're missing the fullness of god's power because they're still hanging on to which they love and makes them feel good however there are so many that are so hungry to push past the same old old lifestyle there are so many folks that are tired to live from struggle to struggle from battle to battle from watching people suffer and people looking from from uh, looking people from moving in the presence of God and not getting the presence of God because we have not allowed the Holy Spirit to transform us when Sister Elsa came up here and says don't sing this song this is how I fight the battle live this is how I fight my battle give him the praise give him the glory dance before him shout before him give thanks to him yes there is I'm going to preach. There's a time as a for there's a time that we need to understand, and we can only do that if we have a personal relationship at home with Jesus. I said this way. I don't preach because I I come to preach. I preach all the time to myself in the shower, in the car, and everywhere else. What I do here, I practice it all the time with myself. It's a lifestyle that I live. When I worship, it's a lifestyle that I live. I worship, my car can be heard from three blocks down. I am crying behind my wheel. I'm 
shouting and dancing in my car. My house is blasting of, of worship music before the Lord because I don't care. All I want is Jesus. So it becomes natural when I come with brothers and sisters in this fashion to dance before the Lord, to rejoice before the Lord, to glorify the Lord. And calling to us, we need to stop thinking. We need to worship Him. We need to come to church. We need to worship Him at all times. We need to stop thinking only. I preach at all times. We need to stop thinking about, oh, we need an altar call before I can get delivered. I can have that altar right at my house. And I can have an altar wherever I go, make an altar before the Lord and pray and heal and touch people's life. When I come to the building, that building is supposed to become a natural thing, what we're already doing every day. That's what it's supposed to be should be a reflection of what we're doing every day of our life. Amen. Prepare an altar before me, the Lord said. Create an altar for me. He didn't say, oh, go find the altar. Isn't that the scripture says? It says, create for me an altar. He didn't say, go find the altar. The altar is everywhere. The altar of the Lord is everywhere. We can have altar relationship grabbing hold of the the horns of the altar of the Lord when we are living accordingly to his will and his way and out of our lack of living a life that is totally supernatural in his glory Peter was facing a situation and he had to make a choice his past experience education information had trained him that in the storm, the safest place is to stay in the boat. He knew how the boat works. He was an, ex an expert of the sea. He was a fisherman. He knew you don't get into the water that is full of rage. You're steadfast. You stay to your boat to survive even though the boat is being tossed back and forth. Eleven of the other disciples decided to stay on the boat and hold which was safe to them think about it there were 12 disciples that were in the same boat with Peter and the 12 disciples decided to just sit in a boat to the safety but Peter something rose out of him I'm coming Lord I'm giving up my safety I'm giving up my knowledge I'm giving up everything that I have because I want to be where you are I want to touch the things that you're touching. I'm going to step out of the natural and walk in the supernatural. I'm going to come define the laws of the nature and do the laws of the glory of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. Think about it. These 12 disciples just saw Jesus feeding 5,000 people with a little boy lunch. They didn't even have enough faith that God could feed these, all this multitude of people. The Bible says the that were sitting down, we know there was more than 5,000 because they were there with their family. They came to Jesus and said, how can we feed them? With all the miracles that Jesus had done, none of them had enough faith that Jesus can do this. But this little boy somehow remembered that he saw some miracles from Jesus before. And he came and says, excuse me, sir. Here's my lunch. I'm offering it to you. I know you can do much more with it. We do not know about this little boy's name, but we know about his faith. He has faith that God is able to do exceedingly above all things that we ever ask or hope for. He understood that he's standing before the creator I am. He knew whatever he speaks will take place. And I'm here that God is about to shift our city for his glory if we are just willing to step and get into the supernatural of and he will change people for the glory of his kingdom if we stop talking about what I used to do and talk about what God is about to do it's going to be magnificent God and what he has done is not an art gallery
to come and look or a museum to look what he used to do what he used to do is a reference to us what he still is doing and what he's going to continue doing but somehow that's where we read the Bible like a museum wow wow God did all of these things may I suggest that there is a Acts 29 continue being written in heaven that one day we all going to read it wow wow the church was in 2020 in 2021 in 222 223 they were doing wonderful work for the glory of the lord and souls were coming to the kingdom of god was following them while they were preaching and unadulterated and the true gospel of Jesus Christ not compromising the word of God but releasing the fullness of the word of God wherever that they go they're still being written we are continuing the Acts the book of Acts is not finished the Acts of the Apostles are not done God is still sitting on his throne and doing mighty work through all of us Peter said which I saw before but the Lord did with the little boy's lunch now I know I can walk in it I can walk in the fullness without fear on water they're holding but the other 11 were holding on their experience you see the funny thing is about moving in the Holy Spirit is only few people that are willing to do it only few people are willing to step out of the boat and do and risk everything for God's glory not everybody's willing majority is always holding on to safety but those who dare to go to the places that the Lord wants to send them wow what an amazing time that will be in him Amen. brother Thomas was telling me the other day he says I never thought in my life I would be standing on the street and worshiping God I never thought that I would stand, you know, on the street and worship Jesus. And when I, when a few weeks ago, when it got cold, he says, wow, I understand now what you guys are talking about. I just was cold one day. We were cold every week, every Sunday, after Sunday, after Sunday, after Sunday. But we had a supernatural power of God in us that we wanted to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever where we went. Jesus is calling us to stand in the midst of the crowd of darkness. This is what God is calling us, church. This is what God is calling us in this hour. Step out of the boat wherever you are. Stand up and start walking on waters that are beneath your feet. Do not allow the sun nature dictate to you what I'm able to do through you, in you, and for you. This is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All we need is just a word from God. And I'm here to tell you that the Lord already has given us a word. Just in case you did not know, just in case you're looking for a prophetic word that you have not heard yet, I'm here to give you a prophetic word. From the back to the front here's a prophetic word from the mouth of Jesus himself go to the world <laughs> preach the gospel of God tidings and the good news make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father Son the Holy Spirit signs and wonders shall follow you wherever you go you need a prophecy here's your prophecy go out of the boat and do what the holy spirit has empowered you to do and watch how god is going to transform your life and the life of those who are around you watch the salvation of the lord that is at hand coming to pass the world is hungry are we willing to feed them and I'm not talking about them a sandwich. I'm talking about giving them Jesus. Giving them Jesus. Jesus. That's what they're looking for. Jesus. 
who believe it or not, it doesn't matter really. God is calling you and I to shift. He is calling us to walk in the supernatural. He is calling us to walk in faith. He is calling us to leave our cultures and our informations and education and upbringing that is so worldly. He is asking us to detox ourselves from denominational teaching and get back to the basics of the Word of God for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whomsoever believeth in Him shall not perish and have everlasting life. He's calling us to walk in the Spirit to holy as He is holy. He's calling us back to the basics of His glory. He's telling there's nothing that you can do on your own. I have established the holiness in your life. All you need to do is just grab it. You see, denomination teaches us what to do to be holy. Jesus teaches us, live in me and you will be holy. Big difference. When we go by the teaching of man, we go according to the works. But we go by the Holy Spirit. We go according to his glory. And when you know that you are a holy nation, when you know you are a peculiar people, when you know that you are not of this world, what do you think you will do? You will do all things. You will do all things through Christ Jesus whom strengthens you. You will do all things through Christ Jesus whom strengthens you. In order for all of us and some of you to shift and shift even to a greater supernatural faith in our lives, we need to have a renewed mind in Christ Jesus. And we need to be sound in our teachings and not listening to anything else except Jesus. Isn't that why we have been given the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit was given to us that He will teach us all things all the truth Amen. not doctrine of man but the doctrine of Jesus Christ Amen. the teachings of the prophets and apostles which should be the foundation of the church and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone of that itself himself but this problem didn't start yesterday accepting a false information about who you are and who we are it started in the garden and I'm going to read that and I'm going to take I'm going to close in 15 minutes you can time me Omo and tell me how good I was Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 to 11 reads and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to them, Adam, and said to him, Where are you? May I suggest that God is calling his church in this hour as well? My bride, where are you? Pastor Jimmy preached about this last year in October. Where are thou, my bride? Where are you? I can't find you. I can't see you. What are you doing? What were they doing? They were accepting a false information of the enemy and they believed in his lies and they didn't believe in the truth of God. He said, Adam said, I heard your voice. I heard the sound of you walking in the and I was afraid I was naked and hide myself and he said to them here's a kicker who told you that you are naked God challenged Adam who gave you that information who give you that false information about that you are naked? 
Who taught you about sin? Did you partake of that tree which I commanded you that you should not eat of? Church, Vancouver, sons and daughters of God, children of the Most High God, who told you that you are not able to accomplish the matters and the things of the kingdom of God at hand? Who told you that you cannot preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the boldness of His power? Who told you that you cannot pray for people and they cannot, they won't get healed? Who told you that we don't have power in the name of Jesus? Who told you cease doing what the kingdom of God is calling you to do? Who told you to partake of your past? Well, I already set you and freed you and sent you to your future. Who told you that you're still a sinner? Who told you that? I used to confess that with my mouth and I'm asking you if you're confessing that with your mouth, stop. I used to be confessing this with my mouth all the time. People, because I learned it from people, it's just a sinner saved by grace. Holy Spirit grab a hold of me. He says, what did you say? You are not a sinner any longer. You are sanctified by my blood. You are now my child. You are now the holiness of me. I have washed you clean. I have washed you white as snow. No, you are royal priesthood. That's who you are. Who told you that you are still a sinner? You are not a sinner any longer. It is no longer that I Christ Jesus that lives through me. The reason we are not walking in the fullness of God's calling is because we are still believing the information that we associate with us when Jesus said, it's under my feet and it's under your feet. Go therefore to the world and proclaim the good news. Do the supernatural work of the gospel of Jesus Christ which will bring folks to the knowledge and understanding that he is Lord who told you who told you I know who told me bunch of religious denominational people told me that and I rebuked it in Jesus name and I say I never go around and say I'm just a sinner saved by grace I say I'm a saint that is full of the Holy Ghost proclaiming the word of God wherever I go seeing the wondrous work of the blood of Jesus supernatural in us when we know who we are not what the enemy tells us we are it is the past Paul talks about it I have forgotten what was behind me I got a hold what is ahead of me and I'm going to press towards the mark that Jesus has for me When God shifted Abraham, Abraham from the into a supernatural faith, he was an old man, and the meaning of his name wasn't what God called him the exalted, was exalted father. Abraham meant exalted father, which wasn't too bad, but it was an embarrassment to him, for he had no children. Don't let your thinking define you who God sees you to be. You were created to be a blessing. You were created to reap a harvest for the kingdom of God. God told him, I know what you man called you, Abraham, but I'm about to change you and I will shift you and I will call you the father of nations. I'm going to cause out of your womb to come, out of your seed to come out life that you never expected to come. I will make you supernatural. He called him fathers of nations even before he had a child think about it even before he had a child God shifted him and called him Abraham which means father of many nations God was calling out of him which was hidden inside of him he didn't even know God told him that is not you it is I that is doing all things for you Hebrews 11, 1 to 3 reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
for by it it is for by it the elders obtain a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which we are seen which were which are seen were not made of the things which which do appear and I'm going to close with this word which to you the Bible says faith is a substance faith is a substance it's literally something that you can hold on to you might not see it but it's real it is real it's inside of you your faith has to be of the Holy Spirit that is rising out of you your faith has to be of which is supernatural because if we have faith of our own thinking it's just positive thinking but when we have faith that is from within us that is stirred up by the power of the Holy Spirit is things that we can hold on to tangibly doesn't matter who will laugh at us doesn't matter who will not agree with us we will do which he has called us to do to bring glory and honor to his name and I'm here to tell you that you have to be careful not to laugh at which God has foreordained for such a time as this. Do not laugh at the matters of God. God made a promise to Abraham and Sarah. And since you will have children, Sarah laughed at God in the tent. And God says, excuse me, Sarah, is there anything too hard for me to do? Because God had a covenant with them and he told that they're going to have a children. She gave, God gave Sarah one child. But do you know that didn't stop for Abraham? Because Abraham didn't laugh at, at God. After Sarah passed away, he had more children. Because the faith that he had for God with his wife, what, come on help somebody, who was his not name after Sarah died, what was his name, Kutera? Kutera, thank you. How many more children he had with Kutera? Come on. Do you you know you know no Bible? That's all right. I don't I forgot to. <laughs> but after Sarah died and he married Kutera, I believe it was four more children he had, or three. God didn't stop there with, with uh, Abraham. God stopped with one child because he promised Sarah that she will have a child. Don't take one promise in your life and just say it's good enough I'm here to tell you don't laugh at the matters of God God is challenging you God is calling you God is calling you forth and is calling each and every one of us to a supernatural faith we're going to continue this next week but I want to stop right here because I know too many things were shared. But what I want to stop here, I want to declare to you. Can somebody help me remove this thing? Thank you. What I want to declare to you today is, what is God you to step out of? What is God challenging you to come out of? What situation God is calling you right now he says I have more for you what promises that he has made to you that requires you to be first about him and his will before he can fulfill it you see you cannot see the miracle working hand of God in your life if you are not concerned about the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ you can't achieve things in your life unless you're willing to pay the price for Jesus. And when I said pay the prices, be bold. Be bold and declare to people who Jesus is. In your way. Don't learn from Ali. Don't learn from Frankie. Don't learn from anybody else. Learn from the Holy Spirit how He wants you to declare the word to other people and when you start 
serving Jesus and proclaiming his word, he will add to you all the things that needed to be added onto. You don't need to ask for it. It will be added onto you because you're about his kingdom. And he knows what his kingdom requires. It is so surprising to me that people will gather themselves around the city, around this world, to stand together as one voice to fight politically, which does not bring no life to anybody. But we are not willing to leave our boats to come collectively proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are more inclined what the natural can do than what the supernatural can do. Imagine as God is giving the increase, as God is lifting us up and he's telling us, step out my daughter, step out my son, do what the shop have called you to do. Don't worry about whether brother and that brother or that sister understands. You do what I have called you to do. And watch me. Watch me how I'm going to glorify myself. Don't worry about that person you or not. You see, the problem with us is we want a fanfare. We want people to applaud us. We are afraid for people to tell us, get lost. We're afraid something might afraid the supernatural to be so much that we do not know how to contain it. I was praying this morning, I said, Lord, why is the word church not more supposed to be? And why are we content with what we have? And the Lord with a small whisper told me, because they are not ready to receive the abundance. They're satisfied with a little harvest when I have much more than just what they're trying to maintain. May you never maintain your relationship with God in the place that you are in. I don't know this lady's name. I forgot. I, I don't remember your name, but God is touching your life and He's calling you to come today to a relationship with Him. I want Pastor Siam, somebody, just, just take some time. God is calling her. God has a call for you. He sees your desire, but He wants to do it for you. You're doing a lot of good things, but He wants to do greater works in you. Just minister to her. Just Sister Elsa, come just join Sister Pastor Siam. Just, just as a minister to her, just minister to her right now. God is doing something. God, God loves you so dearly. He sees your passion for Him, but your passion is a little bit diluted. You're doing things a lot in your own flesh. God, I want to do it for you, and I will do it through you. My brothers, my sisters, Think about this, what the Bible says. Unless Jesus is a liar, then that word is not truth. Jesus said, signs and wonders shall follow us. What does that mean? It means there is a prerequisite. If you are about my business, if you do my will, if you go out and do what I called you to do, if you make disciples of all nations, these things will be following you. We don't need to go and look for signs and wonders. We don't need to wonder whether God is going to do it or not. It will follow you. Be charged up. Step out of your boats. Go 
to your problem. Go to your family, friends, Samaria. Go to all of them and tell them who Jesus is. Draw them into the kingdom. I'm not asking you that you draw them to the church. I'm not asking you to bring them to gospel tabernacle. I'm asking you, draw them to the Lord. What we do on Fridays is the other atmosphere of the world. We're preaching to the whole world. But our Jerusalem, our homes, our daughters, our sons, our mothers, our fathers, our cousins, our Jerusalem needs Jesus. Your Samaria needs Jesus. Your friends, your co-workers. Ask the Lord to give you an opportunity while you're at work. In the grocery store. In the Give the opportunity that you can minister to them. Look for the gaps. Be intentional. In our men's meeting, we were talking about this last night. Be intentional wherever you go. God, I'm intentionally looking for an opportunity. Your name. I'm intentionally looking for you to use me in a super. Look for you, O Lord God, that you are able to raise a dead amongst us. Brother Frankie was sharing a testimony with me the other day. He says, Brother, we were preaching the gospel so much one Friday. Him and this is a few years back. He says, Him and Frank, his friend were preaching for hours and hours and they were filled with so much of the Holy Ghost in them that they were almost broke into the morgue in, in, in St. Paul Hospital. They believed that God was going to raise all the dead people in there. They couldn't break in, but they were willing to break in because when the Holy Ghost grabs out of your, out of your body from preaching, you walk into another level. You can't just stop and preach it. You will walk in the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. It goes hand in hand. Preaching the gospel and walking the ministry of the supernatural works hand in hand. It cannot be one without the other. You cannot have no Jesus and have a miracle. And you cannot have Jesus and have not the miracle. It works hand in hand. But it has to be that we as his agents go out and preach the gospel. I don't know if today that's your desire, if you feel that you need or you are willing to leave your norm and go higher or you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or you want to get saved today and give your life to Jesus. I don't know where you are right now. And you guys know me long enough to know I don't do altar calls unless the Lord tells me to. I don't do altar calls based on religion. I do altar calls based on the Lord. If that's you, will you step forward? This is a sign of stepping out of the boat. Will you just step forward and say, and we have people who have a prayer tag that will start, we will pray with you. We will pray as many of you. And those of you who are in the back, just reach your hands towards them and stop if it's that's you, you want to walk into the next level with Jesus. Just come. If you know that God is calling you out of your boat to make you bold for His glory, just come. Just come and receive from the Lord this morning. Just come. You can just line up here. There's a lot of room here. Don't congregate all in one area. Just come forward. Just come forward. Because what we're going to, what you're going to do after this, after what you receive from the Lord, I'm going to tell you, it's going to fill you with so much power and so much fire that all you want to do is do the will of the Father. You will find yourself in a way you never thought was possible. Our ministry team, our prayer team, if you can just come start praying, we're going to pray for everyone. We're just going to lay hands and we're just going to pray. But the Lord is going to pour His Spirit here this morning to all of you. Shifting you. And changing you. 
praise him. If you want to praise him, just continue singing. I praise.